I have incredible sympathy for the team at id Software working on a sequel for Doom in 2016. The amount of scrutiny you'd be under would be paralyzing. The expectations are so high and yet so ill-defined. Everyone knows that Doom should be good, but nobody can really say in what way. I mean, yes, it's a game about shooting hell monsters on Mars in first person, but after that, what is it? Is it about finding your way through labyrinths? Is it a Starship Troopers pastiche? Is it a fast-paced acrobatic arena shooter? Is it a gory survival horror story? Doom and its sequel slash spin-off Quake have covered all of these directions in 23 years and 8 entries, so how do you boil all those elements down to their essence and still please everybody? First I got to try out the game's multiplayer beta over the weekend, and it's clear the franchise identity crisis hasn't been resolved. On the surface, it plays like a nimble first-person shooter of old. It hops, skips, and jumps a lot like Quake 3 Arena, but the concessions made to modernize that old-school style have had some unintended consequences. See, Quake 3's maps were nested arenas built around the weapons located within. The more powerful weapons required higher skill not just to acquire them, but to ensure that nobody else was able to get to them. The new Doom has discarded placed weapons and stages in favor of unlockable preset weapon loadouts for players. Instead of running around grabbing grabbing guns as you go, you select two to bring with you when you enter the map. What this means is that first every weapon has to be perfectly balanced against the other since scarcity is no longer an issue. That might seem like a good outcome, but the end result for me was that every weapon felt anemic or slightly off. The staple shotguns, plasma rifles, and rocket launchers are all here, but you'll have to retrain yourself in their use. The shotgun has such limited range that it is effectively a melee weapon, and the rocket launcher is fun to watch, but its output is underwhelming. Speaking of melee, the bespoke first-person animation execution kills feel really out of place here, like they're a bullet point inclusion sent down from marketing. They're fun to trigger, but they don't suit the pace of the combat and were quite disorienting. I don't think the trade-off between humiliating kill and player vulnerability is quite there yet. The second consequence of removing weapon drops is that the maps themselves lack direction. In a straight deathmatch, every spot is as good as any other as a place to die, and the whole place blurs together into a mass of brown walls and glowing bits. While the murmuring on the internet is that the devs have slowed the game down too much, I think they've done a good job of translating the feel of Quake 3's frantic skating and hopping over to something that has to play well, not just with a mouse and keyboard, but also with a controller. I appreciate the inclusion of a double jump and the mostly reliable mantling, but what they haven't done is given us enough reason to take advantage of this added mobility. I did really enjoy the new game mode included in the beta. Called Warpath, it's a clever take on King of the Hill, where teams have to capture and hold a zone in the map to score points. Doom makes this more interesting by having that zone move constantly around a visible pathway, allowing players to choose whether they wish to chase after the zone in the hopes of catching someone off guard from behind, or setting up an ambush in the front. It's a smart mode, well suited to the game's enclosed arena maps and its hectic player movement. Capturing Zone Revenant a lot of players are going to come to a new Doom with baggage, and it's going to be difficult to judge the final game objectively on its own merits. It may seem like I was mostly disappointed by my time with the multiplayer beta, but overall, I think I was surprised by the nostalgic attempt to recreate the magic of Quake 3. The biggest takeaway for me is an increased curiosity in the final product, as I have no idea how the ideas presented in the beta will translate over into a narrative-driven, extended single-player campaign. It's clear that the slow trudging through the dark found in Doom 3 has been jettisoned in favor of something a lot more energetic, which, given the current state of the FPS market, would be a breath of fresh air. You know, from hell. I'm Lee, you've been watching Button Bash.